Hello, this is Kyle Kandillion from RoachCrossing.com, and this is a very special update because of all the roaches out there, one of the most revered is the giant burrowing cockroach, Macropenestia rhinoceros. And back in the fall, I acquired uh, two adult pairs of them. And unfortunately, very unfortunately, one of the adult females died, which left me with one female, one adult male, and then one sub-adult male. But now here, several months later, I have babies! Aren't they adorable? Um, so far there's three of them. There were also a few what appear to be uh, more undeveloped ones. Uh, so the way that Macropenestia incubate their babies is different than uh, the methods that uh, other species of blabbered roach use. Instead of an, uh, an uh, Uthica covering like you would find in Blabberus discoidalis, Archimandrita tessellata, uh, Blabberus giganteus, uh, Blaptica dubia, all those species, um, the eggs are directly deposited into the brood sac instead of uh, being retracted or being pushed out in, inside of an uh, Uthica and then being retracted. So the eggs are just dumped in there, and they look kind of like a jumbled up mass. And uh, whenever the babies begin to hatch, they begin to hatch. So uh, there's three of them, and they are just, they are so adorable. Uh, I've read various techniques for rearing them. Uh, keeping them in with the parents uh, seems like adult males like to munch on them, so I will be keeping them in their own separate enclosure, their own little separate enclosure. And hopefully one day all three of these will mature to be big, healthy, giant adults. Uh, that'll probably be three to six years from now. But until then, you, you can kind of see the similarities here between uh, cockroaches and... Oh, I'm falling over. Can't have that. Come on. There we go. Um, between cockroaches and their very close relative, termites, or social roaches as I like to call them. Uh, big head, the antennae are kind of oddly placed with respect to the eyes. But, um, so I'm, I'm very excited because these are just, oh, so adorable and there's just so much potential. They are about the size of third or fourth instar uh, baby discoid roaches right now and they are just born, so they're they're very big, very big babies, but hopefully they will grow to be very large and very uh, prolific in the future. <laughs> so, look at them go, look at them go, and look at them fall over. Let me help you there. Uh, they're not exactly the most uh, alert roaches. They actually have... Uh, an extreme reduction in the number of nerve nerves and ganglia that they have in their nervous system um, and their eyes are reduced in size or at least the, the compound eyes are I'm not sure about the the ocelli but the the compound eyes are reduced the antennae are rather reduced and uh, the nervous system is also reduced because they don't need to respond they're they're nocturnal in their uh, natural habitat generally coming out at night to avoid uh, predation and they don't really need that because need those extra senses because there's apparently not not a lot of predators around that when they're in their very dark and dim burrows they don't really need that uh, extra information so uh, that's why there's that reduction there but yeah, they're so cute and so very delicate looking at the same time. Even though they will grow up to be... And actually that right there is a uh, piece of the adult's poop to just give you sort of a perspective. So, and that is... This is what it's all about. Baby roaches. <laughs> so... Time to get them in their 
new home, which will probably be a deli cup about this size, um, with some coconut fiber on the bottom, these uh, rotting oak leaves, and of course lots of adult poop because they may be able to feed directly on that and get nutrients from it, or they may need uh, uh, bacteria, protozoans, etc. found in that that they would not get in an enclosure without it. And even if it's not vital for their growth, it may actually speed it up or it might have a health advantage or something else like that. And with a species that takes this long to mature and can live uh, for up to 10 years, I would prefer growth to be as fast as possible. So, so I will leave them alone and get them into their enclosure. So that is, this is Kyle Kendillion from roachcrossing.com. And, uh, until next time, happy roaching, everybody.